Hi, everyone. Welcome back. We are on chapter 28, Only Charlie Left. Which room shall it be next? Said Mr. Wonka as he turned away and darted into the elevator. Come on, hurry up. We must get going. And how many children are there left now? Little Charlie looked at Grandpa Joe and Grandpa Joe looked back at little Charlie. But Mr. Wonka, Grandpa Joe called after him. There's, there's only Charlie left now. Mr. Wonka swung around and stared at Charlie. There was a silence. Charlie stood there holding tightly onto Grandpa Joe's hand. You mean you're the only one left? Mr. Wonka said, pretending to be surprised. Why, yes, whispered Charlie, yes. Mr. Wonka suddenly exploded with excitement. And I want to show you a quick picture so that you can imagine what's about to happen next. It's very exciting. But my dear boy, he cried out, that means you've won. He rushed out of the elevator and started shaking Charlie's hand so furiously it nearly came off. Oh, I do congratulate you, he cried. I really do. I'm absolutely delighted. It couldn't be better. How wonderful this is. I had a hunch, you know, right from the beginning that it was going to be you. Well done, Charlie. Well done. This is terrific. Now the fun is really going to start, but we mustn't dilly. We mustn't dally. There's even less time to lose than there was before. We have an enormous number of things to do before the day is out. Just think of the arrangements that have to be made and the people we have to fetch. But luckily for us, we have the great glass elevator to speed things up. Jump in, my dear Charlie, jump in. And you too, Grandpa Joe. Sir, no, no, after you. That's the way. Now then, this time I shall choose the button we are going to press. Mr. Wonka's bright, twinkling blue eyes rested for a moment on Charlie's sweet face. Something crazy is going to happen now, Charlie thought, but he wasn't frightened. He wasn't nervous. He was just terrifically excited. And so was Grandpa Joe. The old man's face was shining with excitement as he watched every move that Mr. Wonka made. Mr. Wonka was reaching for a button high up on the glass ceiling of the elevator. Charlie and Grandpa Joe both craned their necks to read what it said on the little label beside the button. It said, up and out. Up and out, thought Charlie. What sort of a room is that? Mr. Wonka pressed the button. The glass doors closed. Hold on, cried Mr. Wonka. Then wham, the elevator shot straight up like a rocket. Yippee, shouted Grandpa Joe. Charlie was clinging to Grandpa Joe's leg and Mr. Wonka was holding onto a strap from the ceiling and up they went. Up, 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 straight this time, with no twistings or turnings, and Charlie could hear the whistling of the air outside as the elevator went faster and faster. Yippee, shouted Grandpa Joe again. Yippee, here we go. Faster, cried Mr. Wonka, banging the wall of the elevator with his hand. Faster, faster. If we don't go faster this, we shall never get through. Through what? shouted Grandpa Joe. What have we got to get through? Aha! cried Mr. Wonka. You wait and see. I've been longing to press this button for years, but I've never done it until now. I was tempted many times. Oh yes, I was tempted, but I couldn't bear the thought of making a great big hole in the roof of the factory. Here we go, boys. Up and out. But you don't mean, shouted Grandpa Joe, you don't really mean this elevator. Oh, yes, I do, answered Mr. Wonka. You wait and see, up and out. But, but, but it's, it's made of glass, shouted Grandpa Joe. It will break into a million pieces. 
I suppose it might, said Mr. Wonka, cheerful as ever, but it's pretty thick class all the same. The elevator rushed on, going up and up and up, faster and faster and faster. Then suddenly, crash! And the most tremendous noise of splintering wood and broken tiles came from directly above their heads. And Grandpa Joe shouted, help, it's the end, we're done for. And Mr. Wonka said, no, no, we're not, we're through, we're out. Sure enough, the elevator had shot right up through the roof of the factory and was now rising into the sky like a rocket. And the sunshine was pouring in through the glass roof. In five seconds, they were a thousand feet up in the sky. The elevator's gone mad, shouted Grandpa Joe. Have no fear, my dear sir, said Mr. Wonka calmly. And he pressed another button. The elevator stopped. It stopped and hung in midair, hovering like a helicopter, hovering over the factory and over the very town itself, which lay spread out below them like a picture postcard. Looking down through the glass floor on which he was standing, Charlie could see the small faraway houses and the streets and the snow that lay thickly over everything. And here's a picture I'm gonna try to share with you friends that shows up here on the top is the elevator that they were in. And you can see the sketch picture below of their town. That's how high up in the air that they are. You can see the factory down here and they're way up at the top. It was an eerie and frightening feeling to be standing on clear glass high up in the sky. It made you feel that you weren't standing on anything at all. Are we all right? cried Grandpa Joe. How does this thing stay up? Candy power, said Mr. Wonka. One million candy power. Oh, look, he cried, pointing down. There go other children. They're returning home. And that's the end of chapter 28. I'll be back with chapter 29, The Other Children Go Home. Thanks for joining me. Bye.